making the wires and pins for my pick and place machine. Please watch the video to the end. I explain the full process and share some pitfalls to avoid when wiring and creating pin connection headers. I didn't uh, make all the wiring from scratch. Some cables only needed one side modified, while others we had to build completely from scratch. In many cases, we clipped the original connector and replaced it with an HSG connector to ensure a secure fit to the motherboard. X-axis motor cable extension. We begin by extending the X-axis motor cable. Since the original wasn't long enough to reach the controller, I used a four-wire stepper motor cable, clipped it, and soldered in an extension. As always, I insulated the soldered joints properly using heat, sh heat shrink tubing to prevent shorts uh, and keep everything secure. y-axis motor wiring uh, dual motors in parallel on the y-axis we have two motors driving the same gantry but the way the gantry moves means that the motors need to rotate in opposite directions to move the axis correctly if both motors are wired identically they will either fight each other make weird noises or try to push the gantry in opposite directions when you send movement commands you can test this by turning one motor by hand the other will generate a current in reverse, showing that there are out of phase. To solve this, I had to uh, swap one coil connection on one of the motors. That reversed its direction, and then both motors moved together in sync. This is a common issue when two motors drive the same axis from opposite sides. Um, always test movement, and don't rely on wire colors alone. Wiring may need to be uh, adjusted depending on how the gantry is set up.
pick and place head rotation motor. The rotation motor for the PMP head already had wires but no connector, just bare ends. I identified the motor coils and connected them to a refurbished four wire cable. I soldered the connections and secured everything with heat shrink tubing. Proper insulation is very important. A short can fry components or cause subtle, time-consuming errors. Take your time and do it right the first time. It's worth it. cameras, x-axis and stationary. The x-axis camera is mounted on the gantry, so its cable needs to move with it. I clipped the USB cable and soldered in a longer section to reach the PC or Raspberry Pi. Again, test your connections and isolate them properly. The stationary camera didn't need a longer cable. Uh, the original length was fine.
end stops x y z for the end stops i reused an old motor cable that already had an hsg 4 pin connector i soldered this onto the stopper board see my end stop video for more details i'm only using three wires since they share a ground i split the cables into two pin hsg connectors to connect to the skr mini or motherboard the z-axis stopper already had an hsg on one end and a two pin on the other so that one was simple um led light rings the wiring for the led lights is similar to the cameras one led ring is mounted on the x-axis gantry so its cable needs to move with the gantry and must be longer the other led ring is mounted on the build plate so it stays in place and doesn't need a long cable for both lights i added a three pin hsg female connector on the end that connects to the pcb the other end is left as bare cable for now because i haven't yet decided how i'm going to wire it to the motherboard Safety warning, always use wire that is equal to or thicker than the original cable. Using a lower gauge or thicker wire is fine, but using higher gauge or thinner wire can cause overheating, voltage drop or damage to components. Don't take shortcuts. Um, it might work at first, but it can fail under, under load. Voila, um, all the cables are in place. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like a close-up video on how I make the HSG connectors, um, maybe under a microscope, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. See you in the next video.